and leaving those units on the board gives us more cards so we draw four from this turn one two three and four and that's why you can't play nine draws <laughs> that's why you can't play nine draws hey yo how's it going everyone entropy here today with another video today we're gonna be doing a deck profile on jp with the most recent clan event mega colonies now i am really excited for this because technically in the tcg this debuted like sets ago in terms of in terms of the zero and all that um this was delayed quite a bit but with this event we got a lot of stuff we got like a bunch of strong options and uh i like how the units are adapted into the game um you have mainly mainly some generic support um but you also have some other some other stuff that supports like old archetypes no, not this but uh some other archetypes as well and uh, i guess my favorite part is just i guess my favorite part is just the fact that a lot there's just a lot of shred options right off the bat and they all are valuable and at the same time we have a 12 core g zone so that's just amazing I think this has been, I think this is one of my favorite G event clans so far. Just in terms of the fact that you can have like a deck that does a variety of things, have a solid winning image within one event and it's, it's not too difficult to collect them all. So it's just really amazing. Um, I can't wait to just discuss this with you guys, you, you all, and uh, let's go straight to the deck profile. So bugs. Bugs is honestly one of my favorite clans in um, in Zero. So, so I just I just really like the way they uh, they actually made Paralyze better than Retire, especially in, in early in early Vanguard, right? Like Caramelize two two to Paralyze one. Why not just Caramelize two to Retire one? Anyways, let's start off with the Great Zeros. We're gonna be playing the Childhood Commander Rosenberg. Now I'm gonna be using the Google Translate of the Vanguard Zero official site. So if these names are incorrect, apologies, but I guess that's the direct translation. All right, so one of the new keywords we get introduced is Dark Device. So Dark Device says, in the same column, if all your opponent's rear guards or units are in rest, then you get the following ability. So rear guard GB1, Dark Device, uh, put this into your soul, choose one of your opponent's rear guards, and it gets the following ability. It loses intercept and cannot be selected based on the effect of the cost of your card. In addition, you have another skill that's not GB restricted. Once per turn, you can rest this unit to select one of your opponent's units and rest it. So this is really helpful because in Man Colony, you do have some skills that require all of your opponent's units to be in rest position to proc. So the starter can actually just do that for you. At least rest one of your opponent's units. Um, it doesn't really affect resist units, but it's still really helpful. The first skill is nice because ignoring intercept is very good. Ignoring intercept, uh, your pair you can have, pair this with paralyzing it. And um, it's definitely quite solid. So basically, it just gives you extra pressure onto your opponent's face. Um, you have another starter, Boy Executive Crime Bug. Uh, Rearguard GB1, put this to your soul to choose an opponent's rearguard and paralyze it and lose intercept. Um, that's also pretty solid, but I do like the um, Rosenberg. Just because you do have a lot of paralyze options. And the second skill, it's not GB restricted and can definitely help earlier on to the game as well. So for the grade ones, we're playing for the counter charging PG. The deck does counter last quite a bit, so counter charge is helpful. And we play four of the stride fighters, so that is helpful as well because the deck has a lot of great stride options. And shredding is good. We play four of the B Balkan Rayfelt uh, GB uh, GB1 Rigor Circle Dark Device. At the beginning of your main phase, you can put this into result to counter charge one. So again, you do use quite a bit of counter blast, so this counter charge can be helpful. Your Vanguard's GB2 skill is a soul blast two, so having more units in the soul can definitely help with that too on in addition on place rigor circle if your vanguards are grade three or greater dark face it gains resist and for that turn choose an opponent's unit in the same column and lose intercept so it's it's just really helpful it's not gb restricted so you can just have a uh, a and grade two in your opponent's front row just remove intercept and have an extra shot to the face as soon as turn three and lastly, we play one of the Scarlet Venom. Uh, this card's pretty good as well. Regard Circle, Dark Device. At the time of, uh, on place, 
power plus 2k for each of your opponent's regards in the same column as its unit. Uh, so this obviously changes if you retire or like attack into your opponent's intercepts and whatnot. But still, this could be an 11k booster or beater, and uh, that could be really good. So for the grade 2s, we're playing 4 of the Punish stack. Regard GB1, Dark Device. If your Vanguard is a grade 3 regard Dark Face, on place, plus 2k, so it's 11k beater. And also choose one of your opponent's regards and paralyze it. In addition, it gains a skill at the end of their turn. You draw one card. So if they replace it, that's good, right? If they don't, you get that one draw. So that's also good. Next, we play two of the Abyss Diver. Vanguard Rigor Circle, GB1, Soul Blast, uh, sorry, Camelas 1, Soul Blast 1. Choose one of your opponent's Rearguards and paralyze it, and it loses Intercept for this turn. So this is really nice. Again, it's not GB Restricted, which is really helpful, and uh, can, can help you apply some pressure as soon as turn 2. We play four of the Fascinating Phantom a Sweet Cocktail. Rearguard GB1. When this attacks the Vanguard, if boosted, Camelas 1. Choose one of opponent's regards and paralyze it, and it gets the ability at the end of their turn, draw one card as well. So, this is, um, again, helps you stack those uh, those draws. You know, if your opponent's low on resources, you, you can stack uh, the paralyzed skill on the same units, and as long as it survives, you draw cards, which is really nice. And lastly, we play three of the Sickle Phantom. This is just a Vanguard Rear Circle, Dark Device, plus 2k during your turn. It's just an 11k beater. Um, you do have a another 9 plus 3 that requires all of your opponent's units to be in rest position. Um, they're honestly basically kind of similar, but the difference is that one's GB restricted, this is not. So this could be an 11k Vanguard or 11k Intercept, depending on your opponent's play, which can be helpful during the early game as well. Um, as long as it hits 11k numbers, that's what matters, honestly, and um, that's what's working for me. For the grade 3s, we play 4 of the Dark Faces to your main Vanguard, Vanguard GB2. At the end of your turn, you can Soul Blast 2 if you do. For the first unit your opponent plays, they have they can choose to play Crime Blast 2. If not, it's played in rest position. So, you know, if your opponent's low on resources, again, this really hurts. Next, when you stride Crime Blast 1, choose 2 of your opponent's units and uh, paraly uh, rear grids and paralyze them. And gets the following ability at the end of their turn, you draw 1 card. So, they will want to replace them. And I basically minus them. And on place plus 3, so that's really nice. We play 2 of the uh, Superior Mantis, Vanguard Rigor Circle, Dark Device, on place, come last 1, choose 1 unit in the same, Rigor in the same column, and paralyze it. In addition, Rigor Circle, GB1, Dark Device, on place, choose 1 of your opponent's Rigor Guards, and paralyze it. So, just placing this unit, um, you can paralyze up to 2 cards, so that's really good. And we play three of the Longhorn Hunter. Vanguard Rigor Circle GB1 on place. Can last one, choose one of our opponent's units and paralyze it, and it loses intercept. So I guess the difference is that this is better at paralyzing stuff in overall. But if your opponent has intercepts, you gotta get past them too, right? So this is I, I do like Longhorn Hunter better. And four heal guards. And lastly, for the grade fours, we play for the first round, generally it's gonna be the Phantom Pear Spear. Uh, on place, if, if your opponent has three or more resting units, you draw one card and plus 5k. So it's just really helpful. And um, oh, on place, it also rests everything on your opponent's board. So it can definitely help you with your other skills as well. Uh, just that one draw is more than enough, honestly, as a great option. We also have the we also have the dazzling phantom waspy tail. Uh, this is a little, little more rare, but it's also helpful as a first stride as well. When this hits a Vanguard, you can Soul Blast 1, turn one card face up in the G-Zone, choose one of your opponent's units, and paralyze all of your opponent's regards in the same column and row as that unit. Um, so if you choose something in like the, the corners, then it, it basically paralyzes everything from the back row and everything in that column as, uh, in that row as, that column as well. Rows and columns. Uh, so it can be helpful. I guess the downside of this card is that it's Soul Blast 1. Um, you do have that one unit from Fighter's Collection, which is us on hit. Uh, paralyze one from the front row and one from the back row. Um, you can definitely choose to play that as well. But I do think that earlier into the game, maybe if you do, if you want to save on the on the counter blast from the heart skill, um, this could be a very helpful tool as well to so just paralyze everything in the back row. So I do I do like that. You have harmonics just because, and then from your second stride onwards, you have options like lawless phantom, which says GB two on place, counter blast two, discard a card from your hand. And on that turn, your opponent cannot normal call to regard circles with the unit. 
and this is helpful because generally speaking before you know if you have a paralyzed unit you just replace it right it's it's like it, it, it's like it's like a re retire with more steps but with this with this unit what it means is the units that you paralyze with your heart or the paralyzed you you paralyze with this or this um, they can't replace it anymore they can't be retired with for a cost and all that so basically they only have their vanguard for that turn uh, which can be really really good for you very bad for your opponent if you want to shut down your opponent's vanguard instead then you can also go for the stand beetle uh, gb2 when it hits the vanguard count last two g persona blast to paralyze the opponent's vanguard so depending on the situation you could paralyze your opponent's vanguard if they're a vanguard centric deck and if you're a rearguard centric deck you can paralyze your opponent's rearguards and shut them down that way as well so it's just really nice that you have both ways both approaches just depending on the matchup and uh, you pick and choose what you want uh they both cost basically count less two and something and they both do really good for your deck and lastly for the big boss monster it's the grade four dark face vanguard dark device count less one cheaper on the flip uh for each copy of itself you can choose one of your opponent's rear guards and for each unit you chose it gets plus 5k and the rear guards get the following ability it loses intercept and cannot be selected for the cost of your cards so this is really nice um you could use this as soon as possible i guess but uh it's just really good when you're running out of uh running out of copies of of this guy so you have more access to just uh, just ignore intercept and go face um you could choose to flip anything sorry not it's not jeepers on the flip you could choose to flip anything um but obviously you want to flip itself for the first time you use it and um so you could use this up to three times a game first stride second stride and third stride and um you could you could just pummel your opponent's face so overall oh one, one last thing is that the deck draws a lot right the deck draws a lot with skills like this like at the end of the turn draw one card and if your opponent chooses to just minus themselves well you know they're down on resources too so you can outgrind them so because of that when I started testing the deck, I played 9 draws, and I always overdrew my hand. So, in order to add some more pressure, you know, make use of our opponent not having intercept essentially, and paralyzing them, uh, we are playing 3 stands. Uh, that way, we don't overdraw, and in some scenarios, we can apply some more pressure. So, that's basically it. Um, some other options you could try is, of course, the other starter that I mentioned. Um, you could try... The stand trigger which says gb1 at the end of at the end of the turn or at the end of the battle i think it's at the end of the turn uh if your opponent is has three or more rearguards in paralyzed state you can put this back to the deck and draw two cards so can give you the draw if you need it you could just use it as a body if you want to as well but uh having more grade threes more striding is is nice as well you can play more of these just for bigger boosters to make use of the stands and whatnot scale up numbers and um, if you don't like the dark device, you can play the 9 plus 3s instead if you want. Um, and, and I guess this. Paplio, if you want something cheaper. But uh, removing intercept is, is really good. I promise you. So that's basically it. Um, let's go into a game or two on the ladder and see how the deck performs. Honestly, uh, how long is this, has this event? Like, I think it's like, it just ended for like a couple days. Uh, so I've been testing for like maybe three days at most, but I spent a good amount of time with this deck and um, I really enjoy it. I really enjoy it. I think that Paralyze is, is a very neat mechanic and I like how there's like variations of it. You know, is it paralyzing? Is it losing intercepting? Is it not being able to be a part of a cost? Um, this or that? Is it paralyzing Vanguard? Is it paralyzing the rear guards? There's a lot of variability in your play, very situational, and um, if you have the skills, I definitely think this deck could be really good. So, we're gonna be going against. Is this Curry Clan? This, no, this Kagero. Shame. Big shame. Um, keeping the PG, everything else is, is gonna but go back to the deck. We do want the Dark Face. Without the Dark Face, you still have the strides, which are really good, but um, it's definitely not as great. Uh, great three searcher, that's interesting. Generally, it's just Conro or Bust. But um, obviously, this is a man of culture with the Curry clan sleeves. Um, probably just misclicked into the wrong clan, honestly. Alright, still no dark face, but that's okay. 
Just gonna ride this. Gonna call the 5k Bat Vanguard. Uh, the reason being is because we do have the 8k Grade 2 as the only ride option we have so far. And 8 doesn't hit 9. And I don't want to commit another 7k. Yeah, so I do want to make sure that we hit those um, hit those numbers without committing anything from my hand. Uh, saving that for later. So our opponent's playing a pretty classic Kagero build. Playing some Nihalibs, playing some Tejas. But uh, in terms of the rides, I guess, um, riding the... The scaling grade one or the strive fodder is fine. For the grade twos, generally riding the dark device grade two or the on attack vanguard chemas one, that one's fine as well. And the grade threes, obviously, dark face is your preferred ride target. So I'm just gonna ride the AK. So hands very defensive, but I guess that does come in handy when we're we're being pressured. And in terms of the grade threes, if you can't get dark face, which one would you prefer? Um, I personally would prefer the one with a uh, with a skill, right? This one is uh, GB one. This is not so. So I guess that's it. Okay, interesting. We're gonna be seeing. Is this weather cloth the break ride? This is interesting. And um, seal dragons really rare these days. Okay, and this looks looks like jank the deck. Looks like jank the deck. Um, Perdition legion. Yeah. Okay, so. I mean, we missed the grade three. I think it, it works out. Let's just ride this, whatever this is. Um, and our opponent does have three, which sucks. Not much to paralyze or whatever. I guess we can go into this. Just discarding the grade three. Just stride into the grade four dark face. And uh, we can choose to not use a skill. Um, we can still just use this to ignore intercept, and uh, that works as well. So that's cool. Um, this works because our Vanguard's a dark face, right? So the Strides a dark face. The Grade Three is not a dark face, but it still counts as a Grade Three or Greater Dark Face. So uh, this is one way to to actually use cards like this as well. Uh, I'm just gonna use the use the. Uh, okay, that's not nice. Dark Device is not active. Uh, should I paralyze it? I guess I can paralyze it. It's gonna paralyze this, and uh, we're just gonna swing. So I'm just gonna whiff that heal. That's very nice, and we're just gonna swing. We could have actually just proc dark device by using our, our rear guard skill by just resting it and uh, subsequently resting the opponent's front row, but uh, this is fine as well. It uh, keeps our opponent paralyzed in the front row, in um, so they have to replace it in order to get one more swing and make use of those uh, three, three uh, front row rear, uh, three front row circles. Starting into Mahmoud on hit retire one. That's fine. Uh, unfortunately, the starter doesn't have resist, but uh, the great ones do. So that's nice. Um, it's just resist, and then you can tuck it in the soul for the counter charge if you want. So that, that's really handy. So I think it's pretty smooth at this point. Uh, next turn we can still go into the dark face. We can we can uh, remove intercept from both. And go from there. One defensive would be amazing here. And that's it. That's very amazing. So cards like this again will need dark face vanguard. So if you miss I guess it's still valuable to go into the grade 4 dark face. Just for that. Just for that. Uh, the synergy. Okay, nothing much. Uh, still going into the dark face because skills. So, I think we're like both players here are playing a suboptimal game. But uh, I guess what I'm demonstrating is that even if you miss the ride, and it's still big, but you still have ways to play around it. Um, so it's still it's still nice like that. Um, so you're just gonna use the skill. Just gonna. Guess I can play this. Uh, I want to play the 11. This is 11, right? Yeah, this is 11. So I can play this. I'll play this. I'll let you keep that. And uh, I'll flip harmonics, I guess. I just need to remove one. Uh, remove intercept from one unit anyways. Battle. 11. We do have stand triggers, so swing with your 11. This is 16. 
Cannon Blast, what that does is if they keep it on the board, then we get to draw one at the end of their turn. So that's really nice. And swing. Draw a trigger. Can we see a stand trigger? There's three in the deck. I think there's two left. There we go. That's very nice. Very good. PG. And swing 28. Asking for 15. And that's 15. That's turn. So yeah, we, we, we didn't see Grade 3 Dark Face, but things are still going really well. Partly because our opponent's playing a eh deck. I guess we could have paralyzed this with uh, with the Grade 2. I think that's a misplay. But um, it's okay. I think we have a safe um, safe margin. Our opponent's got a sad G-Zone. 10 instead of 12, I think. it's It might be a new player with a super deck, so this is uh, sad. Yeah, just swinging. Novel Vag. Okay, yeah. There is actually a OG Grade 4 Novel Vag build that did show up in the tournament scene. Uh, did well enough. So, that is, that's, that's neat, I guess. Not sure why they didn't stand this. But, uh, just gonna give us one draw. Another draw? Okay. Uh, where, well, there you go. The stride, stride, uh, stride butter. So we're just gonna go into into the same unit. Nothing much, right? They can't replace it. Uh, can we paralyze two? No, we can't. So it's gonna keep going into this. Just keep using the synergy, ignoring the intercepts and uh, going face. Dark face again. Oh, we finally got we finally got a uh, dark face. Great three. That's that's good. A little too late, but okay. Put one into the soul for the counter charge, I guess. Save this one for later. We do have this, which is quite nice. I'll play this for the paralyze. And we can play this out. And use this card skill. Uh, we can flip this since we have two copies of it. There we go. Battle. This is... How many stands do we have left? Zero? Yeah, okay. Let's just swing with this first. I'm going to paralyze this. So this is the right play. Last turn was the misplay. And now both of the front row have paralyze on them. So that's nice. 11k. I think RPG, so no more heal guards. And let's see if they have one more for us. They have two left in the... In play. So. Okay, PG. Okay, so I guess, you know, they, 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 they drew into their PGs without the Conro. That's uh, that's neat. But uh, we're doing pretty well. All right, going to the Novo Vang. We do have the Heal Guards and the PGs to help us out with. The Weather Cloth is going to replace our back rows with Grade 2s. Uh, could potentially deck us out. But we don't have any triggers left, so that's nice. It's like one of those situations where you don't want triggers in your deck anymore. The deck just draws so much. Alright, replacing their units. They really do need to push here. No other way. Alright, they have uh, one swing to the face here. Which is not enough, honestly. Okay. Alright. I don't even know if we should stride. I mean, we do want to hit the numbers, right? So I guess I guess we stride. We stride. Um, it needs to hit though. Eh, I guess I guess it doesn't. I guess it doesn't really matter. I guess we'll just go into this again. Same thing. Nothing much. It's the same play for like four turns now. We use this four times. Yeah, something you couldn't do with the A card G zone. So, something new. I'm uh, just gonna use the skill. Flip over anything, really. Uh, we do want to hit numbers, which is not the easiest. I'll commit this. I think it's fine. We won the game, right? Yeah. There you go. You see the heals. And uh, we can paralyze this again. Doesn't make a difference at this point, but it's something. 
And that's the last PG. And um, I guess let's win with the grade four. Dark face. So dark face carried. Uh, really good card. Just ignore intercept, and then you paralyze them as well. To add icing to the cake. Is that is that the same? And then and then you win the game. So that's basically it. Very nice. Obviously, Mega Colony best deck. Saying that sarcastically. Don't quote me on that one. But uh, it is quite quite strong. You have a lot of stuff you can do even if you uh, brick. As in, you, you miss the grade, right grade 3 you want. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean like, are the other grade 4 versions of the grade 3s, like they, they're generally GB2, right? Like Aerial Altmile or like um, Chrono Jet Next Stage. But this one, this one isn't. You know, you can use it as soon as your first stride. Uh, is, is it a great first round option? I think you have other great option, first round options, but it's still there. Uh, so, you know, it, it's fine. Especially with the 12-4 G-Zone, flipping one over isn't too expensive. So, alright, we're going to be playing against Nova Grapplers Game 2 here. I think one of the hardest matchups is Link Joker. Like, I matched against a Link Joker before, and it was, it was stress. Because they could just lock their own cards, and then, like, and then it's, like, it's fine, right? So... It's it's not the the most fun experience, but other than that, I think over or like Grand Blue, I guess could be not fun. But you have the card that like makes them cannot replace rearguards on units with rearguards, so that works pretty well. So I guess I'm not, I shouldn't be complaining that much. Overall, it's it's just good. It's, it's pretty solid. It's pretty solid. It's not a very fast deck. Um. It doesn't, I guess, you're ignoring Intercept and doing all that stuff, but it's still not a lot of pressure. Like, it's not as much pressure as, like, Royal Paladins with multi-attacks. Um, and it's not as much of a hindrance as New Nectars with Thuria and Jingle Flower. But it's, this deck is still really annoying and really pesky. And if you're into that playstyle like I am, just to annoy them until you win, then um, this is definitely the deck for you. So, let's go into this turn uh, I think we can ignore we can actually ignore the intercept and just go face I think that would be nice that would be fun yeah let's get rid of this okay uh, yeah we do want this and uh, I guess I'll play this 11k very good okay stand wasted but that's still fine we hit numbers that's what matters right cool so this is uh this is the risers from the new nova grappler support i did the deck profile on the victor build but not the riser build so riser a little really rare to see so honestly i'm not familiar with their play but I think overall, just paralyze their units and uh, we should be good, right? They can't restand my skill in um, in zero, so. In the TCG, you can still stand paralyzed units. They just put in rest, right? But here, you can't stand paralyzed units. You can't swap. Uh, you can't move them from up and down or down to up. So, uh, I think that's definitely, definitely different. Oh, heal trigger on the new grade 3. Okay. Interesting. All right, we're gonna be pushed to four really early on. That's not the nicest, but that's okay. We're gonna go into Dark Face. This is our main grade three. Finally get to showcase this. And I'm actually gonna go into the draw. I think the draw is helpful. We're gonna just try it. It's expensive, but it's worth it. Hopefully it's worth it. Hopefully it's worth it. So just use this skill first, rest everything and draw one card. And then with the Vanguard skill, I will paralyze two. Uh, with this skill, I get to ignore intercept. Is that is that good here? I mean, I guess it's still pretty good. Uh, I will paralyze this. No, no, it's ignore intercept on this. So, and then I can do this. Paralyze this. This skill here. 
swing. I guess I, I doubled up on the paralyzed, so that's a small misplay. But uh, how many stands we have? We have two stands left. Uh, I'll still put it here. So I guess you could have just not used that, but I guess we're using it for that one draw. That's my justification for that misplay, I guess. Just seeing some triggers, that's very good. Healing back to three, very helpful. And they're gonna stand their Vanguard and draw. That's uh, that's really satisfying. Um, Nova Grapplers aren't the most known for your resource generation. Um, there's a reason why they rely on like Transrisers and Kirada since, since set one. So forcing them to either minus or lose out on their aggression and give us more cards it's definitely a very nice feeling. It's definitely a very nice spot to be in, and um, it's just a good matchup. So let's see what our opponent's gonna do. They're still in the ride phase. That means they could either re-ride or stride with the grade three in their head, or they could just, you know, legion. So they're going to go into the main phase. Yeah, I guess legion's still good because you still have like the the heals and whatnot. But they definitely need to. Okay, they're okay. I think this is a. This play, they should have just called over the grade two, right? I don't think they know how paralyze works. That it's really good for us, not really good for them at all. So this one, just on attack Vanguard, Kremlas two, and stand all units the front row with units in the back row. So oh, I guess it's not on attack Vanguard; it's just on attack, but. Paralyzed units can't stand. So I hope they learn that and understand that from, from now on. Heal is nice. And leaving those units on the board gives us more cards. So we draw four from this turn. One, two, three, and four. And that's why you can't play nine draws. <laughs> that's why you can't play nine draws. Uh, we're just gonna go ignore intercept and go face now, right? I think that's the play. Yeah, that's the play. Can't hit Vanguard anyways. So here we go. Striding. This. Kind of last a little bit iffy, but it's okay. We'll figure it out. Oh uh, yeah, let's do these. Paralyze the back row. It's still very good. And we can play this. Play this, play this. Flip itself. And I will parallel, I mean, I will ignore intercept of, uh, of this unit. So, battle. Uh, nine, 11, 31. Do we still have stands? Still have one stand. Guess it doesn't really matter which one I stand. Okay, stand trigger here. Nice. Just a, it's just nice when the game follows your script, you know. That is another PG. And that's game. Okay. They didn't see any triggers though. That's that's the that's the thing. They didn't see any triggers, but Yeah. Okay. That's a pretty good, right? Hey, are you are you convinced it's good? Are you convinced it's good? I really like it. And uh, all right, maybe, maybe one more, because that was a fast one. Those two games were really fast. So, I think uh, overall, you could see how terrifying Paralyze can be. I think it's really underrated. I think when, with machinings, with uh, the LB4 support, it got a little bit of traction since you're paralyzing the anger now. It's like a budget. Well, it's not a budget, I guess. It's like it's like delete. It's like a beta version of delete, and uh, that's what was pretty well received. But I think at this point, you have a lot of ways to just paralyze rear guards and vanguards. You have a lot of options with your strides and just draw power. The draw power is really, really good, especially with against players that don't know your deck, which is one of the best things about playing an underrated deck. You know, if you don't know the matchup, sometimes that's more than enough to win you the game. So we're going to be playing against Kagero here with the Dark Face Grade 3. That's great. So I can comfortably just ride the Strive Fodder. And just swing. Okay. 
the great okay so this is this is more like blade master the great or maybe it's the legend the great we'll see uh depending on the grid two lineup honestly i think at that point we could tell as well all right what is our opponent gonna do it's definitely not the cross that's for sure velocity here Yeah, the six plus five. Forgot the name here and the ten k. I say I think this is more of a blade master build, but I guess we'll see. We never know, right? All right, going for the PG. All right, on hit counter charge, and if we see defensive here, that'd be really good. But nope, unfortunately not. We're gonna be taking two damage this turn. That's fine. Still early into the game. Seeing a defensive here is still nice, better than nothing, and that one draw can be helpful. Okay, this is GB restricted. This is 11k. That's fine. 11k is helpful. 2, 4, 6. That's fine. 11 to 11, 11 to 9, and then if we see a stand trigger, this could hit for 21. No stand trigger, though. Unfortunate. But still, needing to hit over... Well, depending on their attack order, needing to attack into 11k body is still can still be annoying. Blade Master... Looks kind of derpy, honestly. 9 plus 3. Okay. Draw. Very nice for them. Not committing 3 rear guards, so we can't get that one draw off them, but uh, we can still do some other stuff, I guess. On hits, useless. I guess let's just go into this. Just have one copy face up. I mean, nothing else is, is valuable right now anyway, so. Yeah, let's just use a skill. I guess we can use this. 11 k mm, Feels like a waste. I think this is... This is fine. Lose intercept and get 5k. And we're just going to swing. 14. And uh, I don't think it's necessary. I think it's too easy for them to replace their unit at this point. And they're all already paralyzed once already. So, got to save the kind of last. Okay, stand trigger here is a little awkward because it doesn't hit numbers. But I guess 14 can still hit 9. Or I'll just leave it. I think that's fine. Just leave it. And uh, Soul Blast 2. This skill I might save for later. Basically, what this skill is um, for the first turn, uh, for the first unit your opponent places on the rear circle, if they don't play Karen Blast 2, it comes out in rest position. So this is really helpful when your opponent's either really low on Karen Blast or have no Karen Blast or low on hand. So if they still have Karen Blast, maybe they'll play the Karen Blast, but generally, I think it's more worth it to just. To just uh, replace that unit, but replace many units, and then it adds up, right? So it does exact quite a toll. Twelve k here. Okay, replacing that grade two. That's fine. They're gonna keep the back row there, and uh, what that means is that we will be able to draw one on our next turn. So drawing into our heels isn't the, necessarily the best play. Like generally, I prefer drive checking them, but like that. But uh, you know, I guess. Can't complain. At least it's an option. A defensive option. So nothing much here. Just one draw. Another heal guard. Okay. I think going into the... Do we have two pair lines options? One, two. We do. And uh, how many ignore intercepts do we have? We have two. So let's go into this. I want to showcase this. So this basically says... Your opponent cannot replace rear guards with uh, rear guards, or, or cannot place rear guards onto units onto rear guard circle with units. So, what we do is basically we do this: we paralyze the front row, and then we use a skill. I don't mind dumping this. Honestly, I think this is fine. So now I will ignore. 
Wait, let's play this. Let's play this. Ignore, ignore that intercept. We will use this to ignore this intercept. And we'll play these. And we have three shots to the face. They can't change anything on their board. They have their Vanguard to swing, but you know that's 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 cool. That's cool. You 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 make you you play the ace. Let's see you play the ace. They only have eight card G zone as well, so that's sad. They didn't get the memo. That's a uh, heal guard. They did search for a PG, so that's something to note. A common PG soul bus too. So whatever they call, I guess, is in rest position or combat too. So. I mean, it's not like they can call anything, so I guess that's a waste. I miss, misplayed. Probably should have saved that Soul Blast 2 for later. But uh, here, it's probably just going to go into, like, I don't know. You have stuff like, just, I guess, yeah, just retire both. I forgot the name of this guy, but I guess you can still do that. But their front row is basically redundant on this turn. Okay. And they just swing. Nothing much they can do. Uh, we don't have a PG at the um, drop zone. We can still use this. We can still use this, but Camelast is a bit of an issue. Uh, especially without healing. So if you can't heal, Camelast is definitely an issue. But this turn, I think we draw four. So hopefully we're drawn to some pieces, and um, that should help. One, two, three, four. All right, one, two. Three and four. Very nice. So hand replenished. Options are ready to go. And we're just gonna stride, I guess. Stride, what do we want? Our opponent's at five. I guess we can go into this. And ignore intercept and just go face. I think that's the play at this point. Okay, use the skill. Actually give us the counter blast we need. Okay, very nice. Uh, just on place paralyze. On place paralyze. And uh, we have this. So I can flip a harmonics over. And ignore intercepts on both of these. And we're just gonna, I mean, swing. We can call this. I. I think it's fine. 11k hits 11, so that's fine. All right, one heal guard. PG. We know they have one, but the question is, do they have more than one? Draw trigger. Stand trigger is very good. That's two. And this is three. So I guess the Solas here is much more valuable, better than last turn. But uh, yeah, next turn we might not even want to stride because we don't want to deck out. Uh, we just ignore the two intercepts and then we go face and uh, that sounds like game to me. But let's see, let's see what happens. Okay, another one of these. We have uh, two PGs and three heal guards, so let's see how they get past that. We did give them a lot of counter blast back though with the PGs that they've been using, so that's not that's not amazing, but it's okay. They only have four cards left. They're gonna counter blast for this, and um, at most they have one more PG left, so I think we're in a good spot, very good spot. So we're with Vanguard first. That way you could still see a trigger. And maybe hit over that 15k number. Hmm. 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 Misplay. Misplay. Not good. Not good. PG. Get the kind of last one back. Okay. I think striding is still fine. Yeah, we don't have any triggers left. Striding is fine. Just uh, ignore intercept and go for game. Great for dark face. Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. Simple and, uh, and effective. So definitely solid. Paralyze these. 
I guess we can't use the skill. We don't have counterblast. That sucks. Imagine reading. I think that's that's enough, right? Yeah, they don't have any options. So we're gonna ask for that last PG. And we're gonna win with uh, Grade 4 Dark Face. And that's game. Very good deck. Um, it's just it's just solid. Very nice. Favorite event clan so far. Uh, above above uh, Mirakumo, definitely. So yeah, that's basically it. Just a really good deck. Nothing much to say. If you still question how to play around with some stuff, um, you can let me know down below. We can talk about it. But you just have a lot more paralyzing, a lot more intercept ignoring than before. And definitely a lot more strat options. If you want to paralyze Vanguard, sure. If you want to paralyze Rearguard, sure. If you want to ignore intercept, sure. Do a lot of stuff. Do all the Mega Colony stuff. So that's basically it. Thank you so much to the members. Can we? Too mellow. ZBD and Casey, thank you so much for being members and supporting the channel. I'm I'm really sorry, can we, for um for for destroying that Nova Grappler player. It's just a terrible matchup. But thank you for watching. Um I hope you enjoyed it. Like the video if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't already and want to see more. And I'm just gonna bug you for one more thing. I hope you can follow me on Twitch if you want to catch me for live streams. And that's basically it. So thank you so much and hope to see you on the next one. Bye.